chapter 9. We've been on this scripture for a season, uh, not a series, but a season. And uh, we're going to keep on that for a little bit. And uh, so uh, let me get to where I need to be here. I guess it would be great if I get to the right place. But uh, anyways, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, the Word of God says this. It says, Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only, the person get, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. We're going to say that all again because this is our season like run to win. One, two, three. Run, run to, to win. win. There we go. One more time. One, two, three. Run, run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. So last week I talked to you again about my running situation on the track, about how years ago the coach pulled me aside and he said, Jones, you run like a wild horse. you got things going every direction. He said, you know, he said, you, you can't do it like that. You're, you're not getting anywhere. And so he said, tuck everything in. Begin to bring those arms in, those legs in. And he said, move forward instead of all over the place because the closest distance, right, to some place is the straight line, right? And I wasn't running in a straight line. I was doing everything else but that. And Matthew was so kind to show the clip of Phoebe running, right? And he really built my, myself up. But it did look quite a bit like me uh, at that point. And I told you that uh, after time I began to simplify things and I began to uh, bring everything in and streamline and I began to get faster and the uh, steps had more purpose. And I found a guy that I could beat on the uh, mile relay team, I thought. So as I began to practice, finally I got his spot. Instead of going to track meets and having to run the long distance races where you went around and around and around the track, man, I had to go around the track one time and I was done, baby. That's it. It's one time. And I was a happy camper because I didn't like to run that much anyway. But if I could just go around once, and that would be the very best thing. So we, we talked about, you know, how I was out of order, out of everything was chaotic about my running. And we ask you all last week about thinking about, we ask you to think about three areas in your life that were like out of control, things that just weren't in order, things maybe that weren't working right. And, and hopefully that you've put some time, time and thought into that this week. Uh, I know that we've had to do the same. Yeah. And, and we visited about it, but you know, for me, or I'm, I'm asked Matthew, what is one of those places that for you that just kind of you felt like needed touched up is out of order? Yeah, I think for me it was um, w one of the areas that I think has gotten kind of out of control would be just the the content that I'm consuming. So like how much I'm on my phone, how much I'm watching. Netflix or whatever it is. That like doesn't happen. Things. Boy, isn't he a, a strange beast? None of that happens to us, right? I know, I'm an odd duck in that way. Uh, there's a lot of content that I was consuming, and um, not that it was all, you know, like it was terrible content, but it wasn't um, maybe the most beneficial for me in the sense. So uh, for me, it was like, man, I, I, I was, I'm, I've been in the season of praying about, like, okay, how do I bring that into order? How do I rein that in? How do I counter that and, and balance that out of my life and um, bring a little more order to that? Right. And you know, last week as we were talking about these areas that were out of control or chaotic, that weren't streamlined, we, we, we read in Ephesians 1, 18 about how Paul prayed for the Ephesian people to have a spirit of wisdom and revelation uh, through their knowledge of Him. And so we prayed that over ourselves. So hopefully this week as we have thought about some of these things, maybe the Lord has helped you already give you some wisdom and revelation about how to simplify or bring into order those things in your life. For me, uh, I've had an ongoing thing with, uh, uh, you know, a big uh, area in my life that I have to constantly go back and keep order on is my health. Uh, I, uh, in my health, there's, there's two or three things that kind of trip me up. Uh, I don't like to rest much. I'm just one of those people that I always thought years ago that sleep was for sissies, right? And uh, so I have uh, I have to bring into order the rest that I get. <laughs> I have to I have to bring in the order of those things that I'm eating 
But for me, I'm just going to tell you, it's the amount of things that I eat. I grew up with four other siblings, and uh, man, when things were put on the table, man, you hustled up to eat so you could get the most, right? And, you know, you've heard that where the lights went out and somebody reached for the last day, got a fork in the hand. I think that was at our house because, I, like, that was just my habits that I got into in an early age. I mean, you know, some things that happen or you get used to at an early age, they stay with you a long time. And so I have to really streamline those things that, that I eat um, and the, the amounts of those things. So for me, it was like that was, again, one of those things. You know, uh, I, I told Kim, I said, I'm going to the store. I'm buying some salad stuff. And she said, you're going to eat it this time? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I promise if I don't eat it, I'll quit buying it, you know. So, uh, you know, this week was good for me. I, I know that sounds like, it doesn't sound super spiritual maybe, but how many know some of these things are the most spiritual things we can do? Um, and so the other thing, the third thing in um, my health is the amount of exercise I get, right? Um, exercise <laughs> is, is great. I, I, I don't mind working and exercising as I work, but just to exercise, to be exercised, oh, come on, man. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's one of the hardest things for me to do is to just exercise because everywhere I walk, I walk fast. You know, everything I do, I try to do quickly. And, but, but so that's really been playing on me this week, and, and the Lord's been helping me, like, tighten that back up again. And, and, and don't kid yourself, these areas that we're talking about, you're not just going to go into them one time with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And, and you're going to have to sometimes return. And that, is that okay that we have to return? Yeah. Uh, first of all, it's cute that, you know, you had three siblings and you're fighting for food. Four. Four siblings. Still cute. It is cute? Yeah, because there was eight of us. So uh, My siblings could eat your siblings under the table, by the way. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We'll um, do it in heaven, right? Also, this is not. You just said something. What, what were you talking? What were you talking about with being in the dark and getting stabbed with a fork? Oh yeah, there's this. Uh, yeah, there's an old story about how. Oh, that's why I didn't understand it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there, uh, well, the reason that I. <laughs> I thought you were. Refer I didn't know what you were referencing. I was like, what are you talking about? But, but it reminded me there was. Wait a, a minute. Time wait. Stop. How many of you have heard that story? Okay, go ahead, tell it. I don't. I don't no, no, no. Know. They've heard it. They've heard it. Most well, of the, the people. Rest of us, most of people. No, you go ahead. Go ahead with your well, story. I'll tell you my own fork story. Um, <laughs> it wasn't dark. Um, <laughs> it was light. But uh, my mom uh, made me sit at the table until I finished my food, and I didn't want to eat whatever it was. Um, and I sat there for a really Thank long you. time, and got so bored. <laughs> that I had the idea, I wonder, well, <laughs> I wonder what would happen if I stabbed my hand with a fork. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did at the dinner table. And what happens is you get to leave the dinner table. <laughs> when you have a fork sticking out of your hand on its own like that, your mom lets you get down. So I didn't know what you were talking about when you said stabbing a hand with a fork. I just had trauma flashbacks to my childhood. Um, <laughs> So we're talking you, you about, realize that's strange, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was strange. That's not normal, folks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I Rebuke never that thought. To be normal. <laughs> uh, so we're in First Corinthians chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter nine. It says, "I run with purpose in every step." That's what we talked about last week. That I'm running with purpose in every step. But the next part it says, "I'm not just shadow boxing." Now I've heard this verse a lot, and in the King James it says. Um, not just one who beats the air, I think is the way that it phrases that. And what I love about different translations is that, like, it can bring clarity. You know, like, uh, I had heard that verse, and I didn't understand someone beating the air. Like, but the moment the, the, this translation said shadow boxing, I got it, right? Like, someone's sitting there, and they're just, like, practicing, right? Like, they're, they're boxing no one. <laughs> um, and so that's just like a commercial, right? Like if you don't understand something or if you want a different take on it, maybe it brings more understanding if you read it in different translations. And I like to switch around and read different ones. But this idea of, of, of shadow boxing, he says, I'm not just shadow boxing. Shadow boxing is, is fine, right? Like you're, you're just practicing, I guess. You're, you're going through the motions. 
but you're not really accomplishing much. There's not really any real resistance, right? If you're punching a bag, at least there's some resistance um, that you're kind of training your muscles in that way. Um, shadow boxing is really just about form. It's kind of a theory of fighting, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> uh, it's fighting in theory, right? Uh, there's not much to it. And I was thinking about last week how we asked you guys to write down the areas of your life that were out of control, um, that we wanted the Holy Spirit to come in and bring chaos. Last week was wanted really... Wanted to bring chaos? No, no, wanted to bring order to chaos. There you Thank go. you. Um, <laughs> this is why we're doing it together. Um, but last week was really about those ideas, right? Like, what is it that the Lord is, is going to reveal to me, the areas of my life that are kind of out of order? Um, but there comes a point where shadow boxing isn't enough, mm -hmm. right? Paul is here is saying, like, I'm not just shadow boxing. I'm doing more than just theorizing and throwing out ideas. I'm going to put in the work. I'm, at some point, you got to spar, right? At some point, you got to get in the ring. At some point, you got to take a punch as well as, like, give a punch, right? The air doesn't hit back right, uh, normally. Right. And so today, really, what we're doing is we're kind of switching to the second half of this verse. Last week, we talked about the purpose in every step, so the intentionality the, the kind of plan going into it. But today we're moving beyond shadow boxing. We're moving beyond the ideas and the theories and just thinking about it. Today we really want to talk about what is the practice that we can get in? What is the discipline that's necessary? Because that's kind of the season that we're in, is mm -hmm. the season of discipline. What are the actual steps we can take to start to put some of these things into practice to actually bring order to our chaos? Verse 27 says, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Discipline is not a word that we like, right? Even though that's the whole series that we're on. It's not a word. Uh, a lot of times when we hear discipline, we immediately take it negative, right? We immediately think that it's punishment. It's punitive, right? You're being disciplined for something. Man, I've done something wrong and now I'm receiving discipline. But discipline really is instructive and not punitive. Mm -hmm. right. Even punitive things right. at their heart right. are instructive, right? right? I mean, I'm old enough that <laughs> my dad spanked me, right? <sighs> um, and when he did, he's like, hey, I'm doing this because I love you, mm -hmm. right? There was, it was punitive. There was punishment, right? And there was pain that I went through. But the ultimate goal was instruction, Right? And so when we're talking about discipline, we're really talking about instruction. We're really talking about developing and growing. That's what we're really talking about. What the Lord wants to do is he wants to grow us up. He wants to instruct us in ways that we can grow and we can progress in our walk with the Lord. Right. And so this week, that's what we want to do is we just want to kind of talk about that growth process, how to maybe discipline um, ourselves. You can leave that right there. It'll be fine, I think. Um, so let me set some of these things around here. Um, so today we are, again, how do, we, how do we get it right? How do we move on into the practice uh, rather than um, just the theory, right? How many know? It's one thing to say, yeah, I've accepted Jesus as my Savior, right? But how many know there's a lot more about learning how to live for Him and how to glorify God? And so... So oftentimes that we don't take these moments to, uh, to learn and train and, and become part of that discipline process that we need. And so we want to talk a little bit about uh, that today and how to get started. But I got to tell you, this is a peanut butter jar. Now, I think this came from uh, King Kong. <laughs> I can't imagine eating this, this much peanut butter, uh, but, but it is. I'm sure it's a gallon. But anyway, uh, you know, oftentimes in the Scripture, the uh, Scripture will talk about how our lives are a vessel, right? Uh, how, and we even says that we have this treasure, the Holy Spirit, in, in these jars of clay, right? And so if you imagine today, this is our vessel of our life here, this big peanut butter jar, a vessel of our life. And you know, how many know there's a lot of things in our lives that's trying to become a part of our lives? I mean, all the time, we just got tons of stuff that is going on in our lives. And so this is kind of uh, that, you know, there's just a lot trying to fill our vessel, right? A lot trying to fill up our vessel. Well, these things really are the uh, the things here that are that are just things, right? 
But how many know there's more important things than just things? There's some things that are more important. And so if we fill our lives with those things, then we stow over here and these represent the more important things, right, of life. And then we try to see if we can fit all this in. Um, you know, um, it doesn't work. You see that? It just doesn't work. You can't do that. You can't fill it up. And so it has to go in the proper order, right? And so we're talking about bringing order to uh, chaos and to some of the situations of our lives where we need that. So things have to be in the proper order for it all to fit. And so um, we're going to take out these things and we're going to see if we can put things now in the proper order of things. Would you hold on to that so it doesn't get away from me? All right. Thank you. Give a hand to my lovely assistant here. Okay. They, they didn't do it. <laughs> we lost That's our okay. touch. Uh, so we need to talk about what's, what's, what's the most important thing that we have in our lives, of course, is our relationship with God and Jesus, the rock, right? Uh, Jesus being the rock of our lives, right? And so uh, we, when we begin to put the important things in here first into this jar... You know, Jesus is that most important thing. That's most important. Everybody say most important. Most important. Okay. Then we have some very important things in life, right? Our relationships uh, with our spouse, with family. Uh, I mean, no friends are obviously important. Uh, you know, I know that I'm closer to some of y'all than I am my, my own uh, family, you know, blood family. So you're my family, right? And, uh, and so, you know, those relationships are very important. We always want to take... Uh, care of those, um, you know, and um, a lot of times, uh, you know, we have to make a living, right? I mean, you know, whether it's your retirement even, we have to make a living, and that's an important thing that we often put in the jar. Uh, we, have, uh, we have many different things that become important to us in, in life, and um, how many know it takes a lot of maintenance in life? How many of you have to pay bills? Yeah. Yeah, you have to pay your bills, right? So that, that's a pretty important thing. Some of these things are important because we have to do them, right? I mean, it's part of what we do. And so, you know, there's, there's various other things that we could put in this jar that would be very important for us to do. But if we put all those in first, then these, this represents, uh, this will represent those things that are just part of our lives. Uh, it's what color shirt do I wear to church today? It's, uh, oh, I had a flat last week on the car. Uh, you know, man, uh, I'd like that new uh, gaming system. You know, uh, and all those things have just become a part of our lives, right? And so we begin to uh, put those things in. And amazingly enough, uh, all of a sudden, we realize that when we put everything in the proper order, I mean, realize it fits. When Jesus goes in first, and all those important things go in here first, then all those other things fit. Yeah, it's like we talked about last week, that we're not really asking you to drop the ball, right? We were talking about juggling last week, and we were talking about how, like, some of you have more balls that you're juggling, and they're, they're in the air that you're having to, like, keep, uh, you're trying to keep in motion, right? And we're not saying, hey, like you need to cut stuff out of your life and do less, right? Like when your life is busy and you've got a lot going on and you've got kids and all their schedules and you've got a spouse and their schedule and you've got jobs and you've got hobbies and interests and you've got family and all the stuff that comes with that, like what am I supposed to cut out of my life? It's really not about cutting things out of life. It's about bringing order to those things. And so that illustration that Jeff just um, did reminds me of Matthew chapter 6. So would you turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6? This is uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' most famous sermon, I would say. Um, we're going to start in verse 25. I'm going to read... Um, I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation. No, I'll, I'll read out of the New Living, and then I'll switch later uh, to the Passion. But it says, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. 
Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them, and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, and yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows all your needs. Verse 33, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. <laughs> I think when I, I read through that passage and he's like, hey, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Hey, don't worry about what you're going to wear. It's like, okay, that's, <laughs> that's not real, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, I think Haley sometimes thinks that I don't think about what we're going to eat. You know, she's <laughs> the one thinking about, well, like, what's for dinner? And, like, have we done the grocery shopping and all of those things? And it's a, a luxury that maybe I don't have to think about it because Haley's thinking about it. But um, I, I don't think that the idea of this passage, right, is that you shouldn't have any plans and make any preparations for your life. What you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, that you should just completely stand outside and wait for everything to fall into your lap. I think the idea is I'm not so concerned about the physical things. Mm -hmm. I'm not so concerned about feeding myself spiritually. I'm not so concerned, or sorry, feeding myself physically. And I'm so concerned about how I look physically that I'm missing the important thing, the main thing, which is, am I feeding myself spiritually? Mm -hmm. Am I, am I presenting myself before the Lord in the right way spiritually, right? How do I look spiritually? Am I fed spiritually? And so uh, verse 33 there in the Passion Translation, it says, So above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the righteousness that proceeds from him. And it says, Then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. What we're talking about this morning is bringing things to order. So we're talking about what are the really, really important things, and then what are the less important things. What you eat is important, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> and eating is good, and you should do it. And please wear clothes at all times. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> right? Those are important things, but they're less important when we look at, from an internal, an eternal perspective. When we look at it. Um, in relationship to spiritual things, they are the less important things. So just like the jar illustration, what are we putting in first? And what are the things that we're prioritizing in our life? It matters how you start out. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, Ethan, if you would uh, put that up there in the new, or the Passion Translation. Uh, I'd like for everybody to look at that because when it says, uh, then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. And that's the point, again, is that these less important things are not something that maybe always needs to be out of our lives. How many know there's a lot of life to be lived? Jesus said, I came that you might have life and that life more abundantly. I don't know about you, but I want to live an abundant life. I, I do. I want, uh, I want uh, a lot in my life. And, but, but it's the less important things that, uh, that often fill up our lives and, and if we just start out right, right? And so we have to put the Lord in first. And, and you know, please don't take that as old fashioned. Like, yeah, you got to put Jesus first. Man, if it's old fashioned, it's the old fashioned truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, that life, and the life, you know, and the word says that man shall not live by bread alone, right? But every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So here's the thing that didn't say that we wouldn't have some bread in our lives, but what are we going to live on first? We're going to live on that word of God that we have for our lives. So just as in running, uh, you, a lot of races have starting blocks. You guys have seen them all, right? The starting blocks. And so it matters if we're going to try to bring order to chaos or these things in our lives. It matters how we start. Remember that. They, they don't put blocks out there for no reason, 
right? The blocks are there for a purpose. So there's a great foundation for the runner to put themselves into and into the right stance. And how many know they practice starting over and over and over and over? And you know what they do before they practice starting? They stretch. They have a discipline. You know what? Most, uh, most middle-aged men find themselves in, in the emergency room for is that, 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 that softball game they decided to go to, and they took off for first base and pulled a hammy, you know, halfway in or stumbled and fell because, listen, we're not as, as, as loose as we used to be. We need that stretching. How I many you know, even before the starting blocks, the very first things need to be practiced, that stretching, that, that getting ready to get in the blocks, getting ready to get in the right stance. So what we're saying today is that, that when we boil it all down to it, if we're going to try to fix things, you've got to start somewhere. What do they say? A journey of a thousand miles starts with what? A single step, right? And so this, this idea of Jesus being first isn't some archaic uh, notion that will bear no fruit in today's modern world. It is the very most important thing that we can ever give you in way to bring your day from, from things that might be chaos into a place of order is when we put Jesus the very first place in our lives. And we're all starting from that. I see you got something going on there. Yeah, this is the point in the sermon where I like start to get like uncomfortable and start to squirm. Well, you should. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is the point because this is where... Someone like Jeff, what time um, did you go to bed last night? Uh, somewhere around midnight, I suppose. What time did you wake up this morning? Mm, quarter to five. What time did you get up this morning? A uh, little after five, yeah. Okay. That's why I start to get uncomfortable, right? When someone starts talking about the importance of like starting and starting your day, I'm just waiting for someone that's an early bird to start <laughs> telling me, that the way to live a godly life is to get up at five in the morning um, and spend time with Jesus, right? And I start to, because I'm a night owl, right? I don't want to be up super early in the morning. And so I start getting uncomfortable because I'm afraid Jeff is going to tell me the only way to be successful and to have a real relationship with the Lord is by getting up with him. <laughs> Let's stop just for a minute. How many of you are uh, night owls? Okay. Okay, put your hands down now. How many of you are godly people, morning people? Oh. See what I mean? That says See something that, about percentages. He, you're, you're speaking. You're yeah. speaking to your people, Matthew, for sure. <laughs> uh, this morning, uh, every morning, actually, I set um, four alarms. <laughs> um, the first one, and then the next one 15 minutes later. And Why the do you do that? 10 minutes later, and the next one five minutes Why later. Why do you do that? Because it eases me out of Why sleep. Why do you do that? Huh? It eases you out of sleep? It eases me out of sleep. It's like I, I start earlier, and I'm, I'm kind of practicing waking up, right? And I kind of work <laughs> into it. But this morning, I didn't get up on the last alarm. I thought, you know what? Let's snooze that bad boy, and let's wait a little longer because I was extra tired. That's how I um, like my mornings. But what I found... Now, what I found is that um, a lot of times I look like the jar at the beginning, is that my day has been so full of stuff, right? It's, it's been a crazy, chaotic day. And not only the physical stuff, right? Like maybe your day looks like you get up, you get ready, you go to work, you come home, you eat, you get ready for bed, right? Like maybe your day doesn't look like it has a lot going on in it, but just the emotional part of mm, the day and good. the stressful part of the day puts mm. you at your top where right. you're ready to hit the bed and shut everything down because mm. you don't want to think anymore. Right. 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 Like there, there could be not a lot happening in your day as far as scheduling goes, and there can still be a lot happening inside of that day. And what I found was that my jar looked like Jeff's at the beginning. And I had this big rock of Jesus at the end of my day that I needed to force in there somewhere. Right? Like there wasn't space mentally, like I didn't have the space and I needed to squeeze Jesus in there somehow. He was this big rock that I didn't have space for. And so in this, this journey of discipline, right, and the Lord speaking to me, and, and this idea of like discipline being painful, the Lord started speaking to me about starting my day. Now listen, I'm not getting up at five in the morning. 
The Lord, yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you. Uh, <laughs> the Lord knows me. He knows where I'm at. But what the Lord spoke to me about was like, hey, what if I was the first thing, the first person that you talk to, the first thing on your mind in the morning? That when I turn off the alarm on my phone, I got into this habit that doesn't even make any sense of like checking, okay, do I have emails? Do I have text messages? Do I have, uh, you know, what happened on Facebook? Is there anything that I, you know, like mm -hmm. I want to check all those things, right. you know, with blurry eyes in the morning before I'm even really awake. I want to check all of those things. And the Lord was just like, what if you checked in with me first? That was the challenge, right? It wasn't spend two hours. It wasn't get up at a crazy time. It was like, what if me and you just started off on the same foot? That was the New Year's resolution, right? When mm -hmm. we talked about resolutions, that was the New Year's resolution. One of them for me was I'm going to start my day in the Word. I'm going to read the, uh, the chapter that, you know, like your Bible app says a verse of the day. Whatever the verse of the day is, I go to that chapter. I read the whole chapter. I read that verse in context. And that's how I'm, before I even get out of bed, that's the first thing that I'm doing when I open my eyes is I'm doing that. And I know that that sounds cheap compared to getting up at five and whatever, right? But I can't tell you the difference that that has made in my day that I've prioritized and put that big rock in first. That's not the only time I'm spending with the Lord for the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there is something that as my day goes on, that there's not this like lingering, nagging thing of like, well, what about Jesus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I squared that away at the very, very beginning. I brought order into my life at the very beginning or at the very start of my day. I'm just like, okay, today it's me and you, Jesus. And what that does is it really sets it up to where the Lord can work on that all day long. Right, right. Like, I don't know about you, but like I'm a test crammer. Well, I don't really have to take tests anymore. Uh, but when I did, right, it was like right before the test, I was cramming that information Oh, and I had a quick recall for a short window of time. Mm -hmm, right. I feel like the Lord was speaking to me that like when I was trying to study right before I went to bed. I didn't have that recall the next day on what the Lord had spoke to me the night before. Right. Of what I had read. Because I was reading it and then I was going to sleep. And I don't know about you, but I don't have a lot of prophetic dreams that I'm aware of where the Lord is speaking to me a lot through dream. But when I start my day by just spending a little bit of time with the Lord, I give him the whole day to kind of stir those things up in me, to point back to that, to recall that information because I've started my day that way. And it's been, I don't know, I, I, again, I don't feel like I'm saying, hey, you got to get up super early, but there is something about starting out of the blocks, like mm -hmm. Jeff said. That the first thing today is that, Lord, I'm going to invite you into the rest of my day to speak to me, to show me things, to, to, to kind of, again, reveal things about the, the word that I read that morning. But it, it really has been transformative to me as I've disciplined myself to get up just a little bit earlier. And maybe not even getting up earlier, but adding that into my morning right, routine right, of like, man, right. I'm going to be intentional about starting my day with the Lord every single day. And it's been a huge deal. I feel like I have more capacity mm -hmm, to handle mm -hmm. things throughout the day because I've started it with the Lord. And I don't go to bed at the end of the day with condemnation or regret that I hadn't found space for Jesus that day, right? Mm -hmm. Because even if I don't get back to it, I started that day and Jesus has kind of walked me through that all day long. Right. And so I feel like that's a really easy win, mm -hmm. right? And, and hopefully I'm going to get to the place where I'm getting up earlier and that time's going to expand. But I think another thing that we'll talk about as we move forward, I think, but is establishing a pace that is sustainable for right. you in this right. race. Right, right, right. That's important to hear that, hear that. If you're not a morning person, saying yeah. that you're going to get up at 5 a.m. to spend time with the Lord isn't sustainable, right. <laughs> especially if you get up at like 8, right? Like it's just not sustainable. It's not going to work out. So figuring out what is the first step, what is the pace that you can set right now that you can sustain and that you can follow through. And for me, where I'm at and trying to get up earlier and trying to even be a person when I first wake up in the morning, 
the first step for me is like, okay, it's going to be one chapter this morning right. that I'm going to be intentional about reading and spending time with the Lord because that's sustainable for me so far. You know, Kim is not a morning person, and I am. I'm happy at first thing in the morning, and I like to jump on the bed and say, good morning, and she just like will slap me and just shoot me because right. she's not a morning so. person. And uh, she has honestly, honest, I was just going to say that she's tried to be, she's tried to, you know, change herself into that person who uh, does that, but, you know, it's just not her. And so quite often, you know, when... And, and I try to make it sound really holy for me to get up early and go to the office. And But you know what the Lord's done with me lately? He said, why don't you just leave the electronics in the other room? Because what I was finding, I was getting in there and I think, oh, I wonder, uh, wonder what's going on here. And before I knew it, I had good intentions, right? But I really wasn't putting Jesus first. I was checking all the stuff just like you were doing. Right? You're getting up later to do it. Sloppily going through four alarms. I don't know. No, I'm kidding. Get to the point. But, uh, but, but you see, but it was the same problem. There were other things vying for my attention. And so the Lord just whispered to me. He said, why don't you just leave your electronics, your phone especially, in the other room? And boy, that made a difference because there's days that I go in and do the Miss Margaret thing. Me and the Lord, we have coffee together. Right? We sit and visit over a cup of coffee. And that's that's a good place. But for me, it starting my day, and it's just me, and, and wherever you're at, you know, but there's there's something about positional for me. Like if I don't kneel at my recliner and, and spend a little time with the Lord there, for me, that's my spot. I love that. I don't know if the Lord loves it, but I love it, you know? And so that's what I do. I, I kneel at that recliner and I spend some that time with the Lord, but but it's not near as holy as what you want to make it out to be, or I even try to make it out to you to be, because I'm always giving him a hard time. But, but you know, I have those struggles too, because I could go in the office first thing in the morning and really never put Jesus first. You understand that, right? Anything become a ritual, but it's about a relationship. But when I do what I know that's my place and my heart that the Lord is challenging me. And you know what? If you've served the Lord for 15 minutes, you know, his challenge to you and his direction to you is going to be different. we got uh, at least three or four people in here working nights. Your, your, your nights start at, at you know, like at 6 p.m., you know, or 5 or 6 p.m., uh, and the world is moving along. You get up to all that stuff, right? And you've got to figure out how to place yourself in that and whenever everybody, hey, they're up, they're calling, they've already called you 16 times, they don't remember that you slept all day because you worked all night, right? So you got to find your place for you. You got to find that you and Jesus first thing for you. But it's important to get him in there first, guys. We'll never truly be successful. And all those other things that, that, that become a part of our lives without him being the rock in the center. But you see how beautifully everything fills in. It's all those other things are added unto us. But he's got to come first, whether that's at 6 o'clock in the evening or 4 o'clock in the morning or whatever it is for you. But, but it's personal. He's personal with us. There's no condemnation on you and how you're starting today. But the... But the but the point today is, is it matters how we start, and we got to start with Jesus. And, and if you have family and a spouse, sometimes you have to, and or a spouse, you have to actually sit down with your family and say, this is what's important, and I'm, and I'm or we, however it is for your family, are going to start with Jesus first. There was a beautiful couple that I used to go uh, to their house once in a while in Dallas, Texas. And it was my pastor's wife's parents. They loved me. Willis and Maxine were wonderful people. And they started every morning. Now, of course, they retired 20 years probably when I met them. But they'd go to the table and they'd pull out a prayer card. And they would read that prayer card. And they'd discuss it. What a wonderful blessing that was to me as a young Christian, to see them starting 
putting Jesus first. It matters how we start, how we come out of the blocks. Believe it or not, this is, this is the thing. These things, these other things that we all have, that we're all going to have, they're always going to be a part of our, our, our lives. Listen, you're going to learn how to handle those really well when you put Jesus first because then that spirit of wisdom and revelation and your knowledge of Him can be operational throughout your day, throughout your waking day, whether that waking day is from 6 o'clock in the evening till 8 o'clock the next morning or however that works for you. Well, however, if you're a night owl, if you're a morning person, however it works for you, there is a way for you to put Jesus first. But when you put Him first, let me tell you, there will always be a sacrifice of something else. Again, when you talk to your family, say, you know this thing the pastor talked about. You know, Kim and I used to, when we were young Christians, we used to come home and say, what do you think about that? I don't know what I thought about that. What do you think about that? Like, I don't know, man, will that really work? You know, you ever have those conversations going home? But after years and years and years of, of trying what the Lord has said, listen, it works. So if you're young in the Lord and you hear this thought about putting Jesus first, man, it will work for you. It'll work for you. But the thing about it is, is somebody that's served the Lord a number of years like myself, you know, there's times I need to repent. Because what I've tried to do is I've tried to go on without Him. I, I, and I need that. And I've had to do a lot of that lately as just saying, Lord, I'm sorry because I get all this business. I want to jump right into business. I want to jump into getting my day lined out, making the checklist to check it off. But Lord, I'm sorry because without you, none of the rest of this is going to be worthwhile or possible. And so that's where we're at today. This is practical. This is how you live for Jesus on a daily basis. Yeah, some of us have settled a long time ago. I'm living for Jesus, right? I mean, we made that commitment. We're living for Jesus. But you have to get up all of every day and say, you know what, today I start my awaking time with Jesus. I asked, was asked uh, one time, what if we fasted our day? Or what if we tied our day? Excuse me, tied our day. That means we'd have 2.4 hours to give to the Lord, right? And I said, well, that's easy. I'd tie that between 2 and 4 o'clock. <laughs> but see, that wouldn't cost me nothing. Matthew talked about the offerings that we bring. See, don't kid yourself that when we begin to really put Jesus first, there's going to be a sacrifice. It's going to cost you something. Your relationship with God, but oh, the benefits. Can you hear me? Oh, the benefits are so much greater. Would you stand with us today? And We're going to set a space and a time today, and we'd like to open the altars. Because you may be like us. You may just need a bit of time to come to an altar and say, Lord, you know, I'm sorry. I've got a lot, and, and the other thing is not just maybe I'm sorry, but the other thing is, Lord, I need your help. I've got all these other things that are in my life that are added to my life, and they're not in order, and it's, it's a struggle, and we're really having, I'm really having a hard time keeping it together, and I can see some things are off track and off rail, and I just want to get it back to right. I want to get it. So I'm going to invite you this morning to come to an altar this morning and it's there's no shame in uh, not coming to an altar there's no shame in coming because the Lord wants us to take what we do today not just as theory but as something that's a discipline in our lives would you come this morning and come to these altars and make a place and begin to 